that took a little bit, but we got it good. So, Tavern, this is where they are, all of our Karnas are going to sleep for the time being. Um, it took a while to build. I wasn't quite expecting it. Um, <laughs> there, there were a couple times where I had, so, you know, using spectator mode to watch, which turned out to be a little bit better than, you know, last episode, because last time I just kind of stood on top of a pole. So spectator mode definitely worked much better just to view the building process. But he kept just standing there, and I kept having to, like, go and figure it out. I guess his inventory just kept filling up. I think I gave him too much cobblestone. But, nice little tavern here. Just level one. Got uh, barrels of whatever just everywhere. I hope it's ale. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is going to be the tier one. It's got set up to get this uh, kind of into a better housing than just the tents with tier two. But what we can do is we can click on this block and manage the housing and just kind of just assign everyone here. That way, every night at sundown, colonists will come over here and they will sleep their ales away. They also need to eat, but uh, yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, we'll have to work on that. <laughs> but to get into what th this episode was really supposed to be about, I wanted to kind of do a little bit more of Tinkers so that we can go into um, a little bit into mystical agriculture maybe because I I just want more access to some resources and probably at least start with this Infernium Essence so to do that, we're going to need a bit of, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, oh, okay, I guess we don't need it for these seeds. Mm, prosperity shards from Prosperity Ore. We're also going to need diamonds. Um, but knowing that I can just do this will make things a little easier for me, actually. Uh, but to start, I wanted to do Tinker's Construct. So to get into Tinker's Construct, you are going to want to uh, have, where is it? Materials and you. This book and all other versions of it will kind of guide you with like, the introduction, like the part builder, uh, pattern crafting, all this stuff, which is here, right? So these are the patterns, all the different patterns you can make, all the tools you can make, and then repair. And this kind of shows you the beginning a bit, as well as, you know, what materials you can do at tier one, which is the basic stuff, as well as the tools that you can make. And, you know, part swapping can just swap your parts however you want, which is going to be useful here. There is also modifiers you can do. Uh, some of them are slotless, some of them, you know, do a little bit of upgrading. We don't have a lot of them because we're going to want to do some further reading. To do that, got to make the next book, which I... Do I have any spare leather? Uh-oh. Oh, uh, don't worry about this next part. All right, now that we've got elect collected, got, got, got elected, now that we've got some leather from a veritable source, we can move on to, I am bad at preparing, let's go. There we go. 
making the next book, which is going to require some grout. Now grout is going to need some specific materials, namely clay, sand, and gravel. One of each will cr create two grout, so 32 of each will give me a full stack. Although, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure... Hold on. Can I... Hold on, if I do this... Right. Can I turn that... No. But I can break it to get all four back. Yeah, okay. Just want to... Oh, no. Just wanted to check that before I did this, because I'm pretty sure you can also turn it into blocks of clay. And then split... No. Split these into four rows for each. Yeah, it'll make eight. Which is still, you know, a full stack. You're just doing a full 3x3 three three grid. Pretty sure this is the more efficient way to do it, but, eh, you know. Whichever way you want to do it. Uh, depending on whether or not you got clay balls or just clay blocks. But with the grout, we've got our next book. So this one, a little bit different, gives you the introduction to smelting, as well as the first melter you're going to get and the setup for it. Uh, moving the fluids with uh, faucets and... Uh, with faucets, <laughs> channels cans, casting, all the different things you're going to want to know for basic smelting. And this is going to be required for our tier 2 materials, uh, or at least a good amount of them, as this is going to be the only way you can cast your tools. You're going to take the resource and you're going to smelt it into the liquid metal and pour it into a cast to give you, you know, the item. Since it kind of emulates real world, world, real world. You can't just hack at uh, iron to give yourself a pickaxe, which I mean, you probably could, but it will it will not be a good quality. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then this will give you a better in-depth overview of the different upgrades you can get, which I think um, it's definitely different from like one dot. 12 which is the last time i really played with this um but like haste used to no it's still just redstone okay something's probably the same uh luck it's called lucky now right it used to just be just put lapis lazuli in there but i'm not seeing it why am i not seeing it Looting. But there's now three levels, and each level is a completely different crafting recipe. From lapis, cornflowers, copper, to gold, golden carrots, ender pearls, and then rose golding, its diamond, name tag, rabbit's foot. So it takes a lot. Granted, it's a little bit better because you can put it on like your armor for unarmed attacks and like all the other stuff. And like even respiration is a different recipe now. Although I don't know if respiration was there before. Hmm. But to do this, I don't know. Wait. Yeah, it might be in the next book. But to do that, we are going to need a. What was it? Smithing. Oh, sorry. A tinker's anvil which is going to be used of any block of any of the alloys available to us, which the easiest alloy we will be able to use, let's go ahead and start these burning, is going to be amethyst and copper, which I'm pretty sure will turn into alchemist, yeah, alchemist bronze, amethyst bronze, sorry. Now, the the cool thing about tinkers, right, is when when you're playing Minecraft, and you've got you're going through the base, the, you know, 
going through the tiers of your pickaxes, you are generally going to go something along the lines of wood, stone, right? You got wood, stone, iron, diamond, and now netherite, right? So it's like tier one, two, three, four, and five. Taker's Construct kind of takes that concept and kind of expands on it, where sure you've got a lot of different metals and alloys to make your tools out of, but it still uses that basic tier system. So, for example, you know, these are stone tools still, so they've got a uh, harvest tier of stone. If I were to make it iron, it would have a harvest tier of um, iron, and that is what these books will help you out with as well. So the tier one materials, going through it, right here it'll tell you it's harvest tier. So wood, wood, stone, stone, obviously. Uh, flint will be stone, bone will be stone. I think most tier ones will be either wooden or stone. Although apparently copper is available at tier one and is iron level. It's interesting. Is copper soft enough to... Is it? Do I have any copper? I don't. Huh. Interesting. Uh, but then tier two will give you, you know, iron will be iron, seared stone, blood bone, I think this is all iron, except for Inferium, which is at Diamond, which I am curious about. It does say Invalid Modifier, so I don't know if Tinkers has support for it yet. So it's, it's going to be a more basic tool, because each of them has its own special abilities. So like um, Iron has Sturdy made from the strongest iron, and it's right here. Um, that says nothing. No, hold on. Why Why do you do this? Tinkers, please. Well, I thought I was going to be able to... Can you... So using this as an example, d copper has the trait Dwarven, which allows you to mine faster the deeper you are. So the lower Y level you have, the faster the tool will mine, which is which is cool. I mean, it's all, it's all got its own stats. This is the complicated part where you have to worry about the different stats of durability, durability modifiers, all this. You don't have to worry about that if you don't want to. It's just numbers. If you like playing the numbers game, you can go ahead. Otherwise, pick what you like. Make sure that it's the right tier. Uh, if not, there is... Nope. Um, where is it? Uh, these... Are these? Are these are repair kits. Repair kits are something you can make that will allow you to <clears throat> repair your tool without the need of the tool station, which is handy. I actually forgot about them. I want to say... Unless they got rid of it. They might have gotten rid of it. There was an item that you could get that you could slap on your tool to just give it the uh, mining tier that you want so like you could make a, a kit out of iron and then slap it on your stone tool it's still a stone tool and you can repair it with stone but it mines to iron level which again gets into more complicated stuff but what we can do is get this stack of seared bricks and start with a melter 
of which, again, I have yet to uh, prepare better for. Here we go. So Seared Heater, Seared Melter, these two are going to be the first two things we want. So this is just going to be like a furnace, eight in a circle. And then the Melter is going to be uh, same as a boat, just with a one of these in the middle. I think we want, I don't know, fuel gauge? Yeah, it just needs five glass. Um, which means I don't have... Hmm. You know what? I'll be right back when I'm better prepared. <laughs> Derp. Okay, now that that's done. So, Seared Melter, we will want to build a fuel gauge so that that can be used for the melter and then just so that we can get stuff out we are going to want both some faucets and I'd say a casting table because I think I'm gonna be a, per a bit precise with this so, let's go ahead and find a spot to stick this for now. I think probably here. Just just for now. Table and one of these. Now, I forget. Can we alloy it? Oh wait, it needs coal. Uh... No, we can't alloy in this. What? Uh, so by putting coal in here, we heat it up, and that basically kind of acts like a furnace to melt this copper into copper, uh, molten copper. Now, so it used to be uh, before 1.17 when they changed ores to drop raw, whatever. It used to be that using copper, for example. Uh, copper ore would smelt into two ingots in anything Ticker's Construct, and a lot of mods, actually. So you'd always get two ingots for one ore you put in. But because of the raw change in uh, 1.17 and forward, um, it seems as if a lot of the mods have kind of rebalanced things, and it looks like they've made it so that each raw component will melt, will be converted into 1.3 of whatever it produces, which, you know, it takes nine uh, nuggets to craft an ingot. So each raw iron will give us, what would that be, 12 ingots worth of whatever metal it is, which means three becomes four. So really, you just get uh, one extra ingot for th every three that you uh, words. <laughs> uh, not the great greatest at words, but and I, this is where I realized that I went a little, a couple steps too far. We are actually going to want a casting basin because what I need is the smeltery controller for what we're going to make next, which requires us to pour, oh, four copper ingots, oh no, <laughs> on top of a seared brick. Oh no. Oh no. I've made too much copper. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Let's take this out. Smelt some more of our grout. Uh, probably keep it consistent. But with this, we now have our smelter controller. And 
what we can do with this, I think, actually, no, I think I, hmm. I'll leave it there for now. We'll leave it there. But the next part, this is going to be the fun part. See, one of my favorite parts of this mod is making the actual smeltery. That was just a quick melter. But to combine metals, make the little uh, pieces that you're going to need. Oh, actually, I do need this right now. Hey, look at me thinking ahead. <laughs> so you can use sand to make these blank sand casts, which are uh, consumable casts that you can make to get whatever casts you want. So in this instance, right, I'm using a brick to make an ingot cast so I can get the cop molten copper out in ingot form. Oh no. And eventually we will want to make it a little bit more permanent. Um, here we go. With a gold ingot cast. Gold is permanent, sand is temporary. And you can do that for any of the different items you make. Um, so if you. So if it's going to be something they're going to be using a lot, like an ingot cast, I'd recommend using some gold on it. But if it's something like a pickaxe head that you're just going to make one of for right now, it might be better worth it if you just, you know, do a temporary cast. So a couple of the things we're going to want is going to be this seared drain. This is what uh, you're going to, this is going to be a block that you set down that lets your smeltery know that, hey, I'm going to be inputting and outputting fluid here, which will make sense a little more in just a moment. We're also going to want some more glass so that we can make the seared fuel tank. This is the fuel tank for the smeltery. This is where we're going to put some lava so that we can melt things at a higher temperature than coal. And then beyond that, I think all that's left is seared bricks. And once we have all that, let's just make some space real quick. I kind of like sinking it down into the ground. So a little 3x3 three three area. Get your seared bricks. Gonna get that floor of the smelter going. As well as some walls. And I think I actually made this perfect. Get the smelter controller. I like to set it in the middle just because it's nice and nice, nice and neat with the fuel tank next to it. Ooh, actually, I think I want to do this on, I think I want to do this on this side, so we can get that, that, and then I do want one more of these drains. And if we set these on both sides here and fill that in. This is the completed structure. And I think you'll notice, yeah, those will fill out as if they're closed. And once you finish the structure and it recognizes that this is complete, it'll open up, which means this is ready to melt things. This yellow square here is let me know that, hey, I can expand this by putting blocks on all 12 of these to expand it to go higher. As the melter could only fit three items, this can fit in as many items 
as you have space. So, since this is a 3x3, three three, this can fit 9 items in, which can be shown as such. All 9 of those will melt into molten copper with fuel. Uh, ooh, not that. Do we have some lava nearby? a lava pool I could take advantage of, which means I might have to find one down below. Oh, there's that one. That's way over there, though. I do think, though, I have more iron, right? Yeah. Pretty sure that the tank will retain it's fluid, so I might just pop down with this, try to find some lava, come back, and then we can try to finish off our little upgrade to our tools. See you in just a second. All right, and we're back. Almost died for this, actually. But put it down, get things set back up, and then we can put the copper in. Now real quick. Alloying is an interesting thing. See, uh, when you alloy, you want to grab the specific items that is needed to make the resulting alloy, and then you will get an amount depending on how much you put in. Uh, for copper and for amethyst bronze, you'll need one each of amethyst and copper for each ingots that you get of amethyst bronze. So essentially if three bronze gives four ingots and one amethyst shard will give us one uh, gems worth of amethyst, we'll need four amethysts per three raw copper to make uh, four ingots. Um, some of them are a little different though, like molten copper, three ingots, and one gold will give us four rows gold. So a silly equals out to four ingots, four, four ingots. And I think some of them are a little different. I don't know what nepotism is. We'll, we'll probably get there. It looks like it uses cobalt, which is a higher tier uh, material. Interesting that copper is being used quite a bit. But we're going to want three and four and then to make the next the tinker's forge we're going to want three blocks which is 27 oops sorry 27 ingots i believe so we're probably going to want quite a few of this Pouring it. Oh gosh. That's a block so far. Okay. So then over here, we're going to set up our casting basin. We might as well pick this up. I'll leave that in the corner. Why not? And put our table here. Put a couple, f not, not there. And then putting a couple of faucets here will allow. Why are you still wanting it? Oh. And putting faucets on these drains will allow us, when we click it, to let it know to start pouring. And once, when we just pour it into the basin we'll be able to get it to slowly turn into the block. But if we were to pour it into here, I don't think it, yeah, it won't do anything because it needs a cast. 
which is what we did before by using some sand to make some temporary casts. Now I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna need just a few more of these. That's two. This will be eight more. So we'll have one left over, which should be fine. We might want to make just a little bit extra for some tools. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And then I think that is the rest of this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that'll be the rest of that. So Amethyst Bronze we'll use. It'll, um, once it goes. And are we... No, I've got some right here. Cool. So what we are going to want is to take this and we're going to upgrade it. We're going to put it, the Tinker Station, in the center. Bricks on either side for legs. And all three blocks on top to make an anvil. Now this, advanced tool making, this is where the upgrade panel uh, kind of looks a lot more like the upgrades in the book. And we get options for bigger tools like the cleaver, excavator, which mines dirt and you know sand gravel in three by three, vein hammer, which will harvest uh, connected blocks of the same type, which is really good for ores. Uh, sledgehammer, which, you know, same thing as the excavator, but for stone tools. Uh, mine's in a 3x3. Three three. That's going to be something I get uh, here soon, because mining is going to be a must coming up for me. Probably between episodes, mining isn't exactly the most riveting gameplay to watch. Um, broad axe, another useful item that I'm probably going to want here in a moment. This will allow me to mine trees by just breaking one of the block. Um, I'm pretty sure it does have a limit, so you can't like break ginormous trees in one go, but just you know, mine at the bottom and I'll mine up the whole tree. And then the scythe, which it's a 3x3 three three harvesting tool. You can actually right-click it to harvest and replant crops, which will be sort of handy. Uh, we'll see about getting into that one as well. But for right now, what we are wanting is we are probably going to want to upgrade at least our pickaxe, which will require both a stone head as well as some length casts because the Amethyst Bronze is going to have a mining level of diamond. Pretty sure. We can double check because when we hover over it and hit shift, we can see all its stats. And yes, mining tier diamond. And when we come up here to replace our tool head, we can see all the stats over on this side. And once we place this in, we can see that it'll upgrade to all those. So before, mining speed of 4, now mining speed of 7. It also increases our durability by about 590, which is actually very nice. So I can mine for a lot longer and be able to um, mine more things. Now, I think... I will also want to make a tool handle. It, my, I'm using stone currently, which is like one times on everything, but I'm pretty sure that the amethyst bronze. Here we go. Yeah, yeah it's got mining. Sp yeah, it's just a little bit better. So I think I'm going to get. A handle for it as well. And with this added to my tool, 
Yeah, minus speed up to 7.7. 7. And it gives me crumbling, which lets me mine blocks that don't require a tool just a little bit faster. Um, which will be handy. I think on a pickaxe? Not 100% sure. But either way, got a better pickaxe for mining, which means that getting um, a lot more mining done between episodes will be a lot easier and quicker, and I'll have a lot more stuff prepared for the next episode. Uh, I want some more patterns, because I think, I think I've gone on just a little bit too long, and I think it's time to end. I kind of lost my sense of time with that uh, build for the tavern, because man, that took, that took some time. So with the, oh yeah, up at the top you can also switch between the blocks without having to close the, G, the GUI. So I think I, I might do this one off camera just so I can mine a bit more. I might get both of these. I'm probably going to use the same material, the amethyst bronze. Just going to get these real quick between episodes, mine out some stuff, collect some wood for the build. And I think I'm going to start next episode with the town hall being built. As well, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to start with the town hall being built. And then we're going to look into both a little bit of mystical agriculture, as well as maybe moving that builder's hut, which I kind of need to build the town hall first for, because the town hall is the one that tells you where you want to probably place the buildings to start with, with the fortress schematic. Uh, and so far, this military is going to be very useful. It's a good way to get a little bit more ingots out of your ore, as well as making these awesome tools. And with them, hopefully, I will be better prepared for next time. I, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, leave a like. Maybe subscribe to see a lot more uh, of these videos from me. I am still doing everything I can to get back into the swing of things, get back into video making mode. But I'll just keep on going. Until next time.